corner where the trees at. Is, is this the, the passing of the torch, right? Is this what this signifies? It, it comes down to that, that front office and what they feel is most important. The champ is here. We've touched down from a higher plane. Why you made it here? We always look forward to that week because it was always intense. You know that we ain't coming back. We got to. The man, the myth, the legend, Dante Hall. My, my, my favorite player growing up was Dante Hall. I love you guys in the show, but Dante was my guy. Get to dashing because you're done on the war feet. This episode of Chief Concerns is brought to you by BetOnline.ag. Hey there, Marcus Dash here from Chief Concerns. Just want to comment and say BetOnline is your number one source for all your sports betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for football, baseball, boxing, golf, and much more. BetOnline continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, where the game starts. Hey guys, welcome to Chief Concerns' final, final draft show of 2024 until 2025. On this episode... Um, Myself, Marcus Dash, in the middle there, you got former Chiefs tight end Jason Dunn and my brother on the right there, Tasha Dash. We're going to get into the Chiefs dra- draft grades. So, yeah, all three last three days, we've reacted to Xavier Worthy the first day, second day, uh, getting Kingsley, and then yesterday, all the four rounds, four through seven picks. Uh, today, we're going to give a draft grade on the entirety of the draft, and then as well, we're going to go over who's Jason and Tasha's favorite draft pick and their least favorite draft pick of this draft. So uh, we'll begin with uh, the draft grades, guys. JD, um, just obviously I'll all go over quickly. So quickly, first round, Xavier Worthy. Second round, Kingsley uh, Sua Mataya. Jared Wiley in the fourth round. Yeah. Jaden Hicks in the fourth round. Hunter News North Dad in the fifth round. Kamal Hayden in the sixth round. And seventh round, CJ Hansen from Holy Cross. Mm-hmm. So guys, take it away. So you yeah, I mean a grade each every one and then give you a grade total on the draft. You mean just do it that way? I, you yeah. know, final report. Okay. So oh, uh, we'll start with our guy, Xavier Worthy out of Texas. Um, we got what we needed. We know we needed a wide receiver uh to fit in this offense, somebody who's gonna be able to stretch the field, somebody that's gonna take the place of Rasheed Rice, uh, under his uh his, you know, I think notable suspension that will probably end up happening. Uh, but also, too, we, we're trying to get somebody for the future. Xavier Worthy, we got him in the first round, uh, 28th pick. A speedy guy, a lot of, you know, it can move in and out of breaks. Wonderful, wonderful target for Patrick Mahomes. Uh, and we're talking about also, too, he is, without a doubt, a guy to go hit his head on the goalpost. Also, too, on special teams. So I have Xavier Worthy. I got right now for for the Chiefs an A right there with Xavier Worthy. Love him a lot. Uh 63, Kingsley, suing my tie. Uh, love him. Uh, he's one of my Samoan brothers. We have one, uh, Junior Say of V. I said this right here, man. Heart goes out to Junior, man. Great guy. They got a great community in Kansas City as far as Samoans and whatnot, Tongans. Uh, he's going to fit right in. Uh, they're going to make him feel at home. A uh, guy that they wanted. Uh, we was talking about getting a tackle. There was another need that we had to get and address on offense. Uh, He's a, he's a guy that's very athletic. He's going to challenge Ronye Morris. A lot of people's not okay with Ronye Morris where he's at right now. This might put it like maybe a little burn up underneath his butt, right, to get him going. And so we'll see. There'll be a good challenge. Obviously, OTAs and training camp. Uh, Kingsley Sumaya Tai. Uh, I like him. I got a B for him. Uh, Jared Wiley, tight end, kind of surprised for me. Uh, he was a little bit later uh, tight end on the board. I uh, liked him a lot. Uh, he's uh, a tall tight end. A uh, little thin in the frame. Uh, has some athleticism. We uh, a full room right now with uh, with Travis Kelsey uh, and also uh, Noah Gray, and we just got Irv Smith there. So he's learned a lot from some guys that's got some really good experience. So he'll soak all that in. Uh, I like the pick. That's a B for me for Jared Wiley. Jaden Hicks, uh, he's seeking missile, does a good job in space where everybody else is uh, in relation to him. Uh, we seem to get a lot of different picks. Uh, he comes down in the, in the box. Uh, like Spags likes, uh, and he, he's, he blitzes right, too. So he, he fits right into our scheme. He's just a young guy that's going to grow. He'll be a starter anywhere else. 
if we, the Chiefs didn't have some star safeties right down on the on the board for us. Uh, but I like Jenna Hicks a lot. That's an A for me. Uh, then we go to our young guy, Hunter Nor Norzad, right? The Persian. Okay. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna call him the little Persian roll. We got Persian rolls down here, man, that we love eating. I'm gonna call him Mac. Man, he might be a little sweet for us on the offensive line. So I'm gonna just call him the Persian roll for us right there. But you know, if you don't mind me saying so. I but like uh, I like it because <laughs> Persian brothers are like y'all, uh, the respect to it all the way. Uh, very versatile guy, all on. We're looking for a Nick Oliveretti kind of uh, a replacement. Uh, Hunter Nervzad. Uh, I like him. Don't know a whole lot about him. I had to look at him a little bit more. So I'm gonna also give the him a. I'm gonna give him a B also. Uh, then we go Kamal uh, Hayden, uh, DB from Tennessee. Uh, lanky guy. We know this is what Spags likes. This is body type. Uh, fits right into what we do. He's got some good corners in front of him. He's gonna learn a lot. He's gonna be ready probably by next year. He's gonna get a lot of play. Uh, special teams, all of that to get his face shown to the world. Uh, but I do like Kamal Hayden. Uh, I actually got that probably a C plus um, just because of some of the things I heard. But I, that, that doesn't mean he can't approve. I think he's got a good landscape. He's going to the right place. DB University, what I call Kansas City Chiefs. And then we got our last guy, CJ Hanson from Holy Cross, O-line. Uh, he's a Swiss Army knife, can do it all on the O-line. Um, and I think he's very athletic. They talk about his athleticism. Uh, he's got some size to him. Could play tackle, guard, center. Could do all. all. Uh, and I think that right there is another depth piece for us. Uh, I do like CJ Hansen. I'm gonna give him uh, also uh, a B. So totally, okay. With all my combination of all these guys from this draft, the Chiefs addressed everything they needed to address uh, as far as the things uh, that we were lacking in. Uh, we might we missed out on some things. I think we should have got in, and we didn't do. Uh, so with that, I'm going to give the draft from my estimation of things that we hit, things I think we should have gotten. I'm going to give us a B minus for the draft. That's where I'm at. Oh, I'm sorry. And then, of course, all the guys that we have as unrestricted uh, uh, free agencies that's coming in as well. So there's some great guys, some great names that came in, some running backs. Um, I think we got another guard and maybe a, a, a defensive lineman that I'm – Wait to see to see how he is. Kind of see him a little bit on film. Uh, we'll see what he'll be able to do. Is he going to be more of what we the same of what we've had, or he's going to set himself apart from all the other guys on the inside? So that's here to say. So that's what I got. All right. Uh, uh, when I comment here, so why oh made why can't be ours have well written articles about these things rather than have us waste our time listening to people talk? Well, why oh well not every not every day you get a, you hear a former. A, uh, a former 10-year-plus vet in the NFL get to speak about a team and give his uh, draft great reactions. So uh, that's why. So uh, just moving on there. Hey, <laughs> so you came out here to see us. Hey, you didn't come to read the article. You came that's to true. see us talk. That's true. Okay. That's true. Why you're made. Appreciate you, man, for showing up. <laughs> you got some good stuff there. Yeah, exactly. Why do, uh, they make, why do they make audiobooks? Because people don't like reading anymore. There you go. <laughs> How about that? There you go. There you go. Tasia, uh, uh, go through your uh, your draft grades here for the uh, the seven selections that we have. Yeah, I'll just do it real fast. So uh, Xavier Worthy, um, I'm going to give that a – I'm going to give it a B just because we had to trade up um, to get him, and even though that might have not have been necessary. So I'll say – I'll give it a B instead of an A. Um, taking away our 95th pick, trading down, uh, maybe less ideal. Um, uh, oh, man. Yeah, remind me again. Our second pick. Oh yeah, God, how can I forget? Uh, Suama Suama Taia. Um, I'm giving that an A. I know he's a development tackle, but it fits a need, and that was someone that had a high second round grade. Um, so just based on the value, uh, we hit it out of the park. I'm giving that an A. Wiley. Um, from multi, it wasn't a guy I looked at before the draft, but considering what he brings and where he was taken, a, a lot of analysts and a lot of scouts had him ranked a lot higher than the tight ends that were drafted above him. Um, I know he's not Kelsey, but if you look at their athletic grades next to each other, they are very, very, very similar. 40 time, three cone, a uh, 10 yard shuttle, a uh, 20 yard shuttle, 40 yard, uh, vertical. I think the broad he gets him, I think Kelsey got him by on the broad. But everything else was very, very close across the board. So 
Um, for everyone that says, um, you know, he's not Kelsey. Well, Kelsey wasn't Kelsey coming out of the draft. So um, no one expected a Hall of Fame uh, badass tight end to come out of that. Right. Um, so it's unfair for the kid to be compared to a Hall of Famer. But, you know, it's also an advantage because you can also learn from that Hall of Famer. Absolutely. One of the things he's not great at, which is the sharp cutting and some of the refined route running. Well, you have one of the best doing that. So you can learn from him. Um, Hicks, just incredible. Uh, one of the seals of the draft overall um, had a high second round grade from most people. Uh, he was considered, if well, not one of the best, the best safety in the draft. So we got him where we got him. That's extremely, that's, it's amazing. Uh, Norzad, um, one of the guys I was looking at drafting on day three, uh, can play center, can play guard exactly what we need to play the little tackle the short arms i don't think he can maybe in a pinch but um he takes over our allegretti role which i love um he's got flaws you know fails to recognize some of the twist games he needs to get a little stronger and refine his technique but that's okay he's going to be our utility inside man our sixth man as they you know say in basketball uh to come off the bench if anyone gets hurt um and i think he's ready a lot of analysts said he's ready to start day one for us he won't unless someone gets injured so that's that's a Positive to have uh, Hayden. Um, I liked what I read. Some of the things I, I, I read about him um, also turned me off a little bit. But, you know, at that point, guys have flaws, right? Like they're not like the refined prospects. Otherwise, they would have been drafted on day or one or day two. Um, I, I'll give that one. Um, I didn't give North. I didn't give the other guys great. I'll just talk about each guy and give my overall. Uh, Hayden, um, probably my lower grade C plus, I'd say. Um, and then CJ in the uh, seventh, uh, another guy who could possibly in the future become our Allegretti right now. He'll kind of be our, you know, a uh, third stringer also has a lot of versatility played everywhere. Um, I like that pick. I just think it, it's not more of a today pick. It's more of a tomorrow pick, but um, I'll give that one a B minus. Uh, so overall where we got each guy, as far as value goes, um, I know Warren Sharp had a tweet saying, I think we were top five in um value where we drafted our players um i'm gonna say i'm gonna say b plus um i'm very close to an a just because we hit our needs and if you add jacobs in there by the way our top uh udfa we got um who had a fifth and sixth round grade because i thought we would get a linebacker in this draft so if you add jacobs to that if, if we had one more seventh round pick and we got jacobs i'd be giving this an a off value so um, I'm going to give B plus, you know, um, you know, if you stay after class and talk to me, I might bump it up to an A type of thing. Yeah. I was very surprised on your, your Hayden uh, choice there on the not saying, not really liking that pick a lot. I mean, cause with our DB situation, that's a guy we don't need to have come on right away. That's like a, maybe a one year thing to, as he recovers from his shoulder injury. So I, I do, you know, I do like that pick a lot uh, for me. Not to say I don't like it. I like it. We had it. If you have a B plus a draft, um, Obviously, your lowest rated guy is not going to be a bad pick. Um, it's just not as I just don't like him as much as the other guys. I, I gotcha. Think, is my is my opinion. Um, gotcha. His makeup looks great. I mean, he looks like Snead. He, he if you put him and Snead next to each other coming out of out of school, they're like identical in like five or six different traits. Um, so I do like him in that regard. Um, we can get into it in a little bit. Why you know I'm a little iffy. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go to our uh, next topic here. So favorite picks. Obviously, you guys went through your, your grades and everything uh, on um, on all the picks. Who is your favorite pick of this draft? I, I might have an idea of who JD's is, but we'll see. JD, who's your favorite pick of uh, this Chiefs 2024 draft? Uh, so I'm, I'm going to do a, a 1A, 1B uh, favorite pick, okay? Because uh, I've I, I graded these guys the same. Uh, and that would be Xavier Worthy and Jaden Hicks. That would be my favorites for this draft. Um, obviously, because we needed a wide receiver. He fits everything that we do, the bill of it. Um, he's silky smooth, gets out of breaks, fluid, um, does a great job getting the ball in his hands. We, the offense he ran down in Texas is exactly what we do with the Chiefs. Uh, I always say this is a, a small man's offense. If everybody hasn't been watching it, I think people look at it and, and, and like Taja said during the week, people put him in a box because he ran a 4-2. Well, we got that guy, okay? Runs a 4-2 and does everything that we ask him to do, right? Wide receiver screens, slants, hitches, curls. Um, 
uh, double moves, whip routes. He does everything we ask him to do. What we're needing in a receiver, uh, and he's he's he, he's a baller, right? He may, he makes a lot of plays. So we're asking for him to go hit his head on the goalpost. So we didn't, you know, we were looking for a bigger body receiver, right? Obviously, that's what everybody wants. Everybody covets having AJ Brown or maybe Xavier Leggett. I was wanting Xavier Leggett. Okay, but this guy right here fits exactly what our offense needs. Andy Reid is like, this is the guy. Okay, what he did in Texas is exactly what we do here with the Chiefs. And so uh, that's a pick to me. Plus, he's the fastest guy in the NFL right now, right? So we have him. The Chiefs have this weapon. Patrick Mahomes has another guy, another weapon, almost like a Tyree Kill. He has that speed like Tyree Kill. He has the jukes like Tyree Kill. Is he Tyree Kill 2.0? No, I don't say that. He's Xavier Worthy, number one. And so we're going to be able to see what he can do out there on the field. Uh, but I'm excited. I'm excited, especially with Hollywood Brown right there next to him, where she Rice gets back. Kadarius Tony is going to give us something too. Uh, and Travis Kyle, so obviously, right, uh, Hall of Famer tight end uh, is, is that we're going to have our offense back, okay, the one that was scoring 30, 40 points a game, okay? That's what we're looking at. I'm talking about Worthy. Yes, sir. That's exactly what I'm talking about. No doubt about it. So Xavier Worthy, man, is the guy, okay? So everybody just get your popcorn, uh, sit, your, sit your feet back, okay, and just enjoy the show because he's going to be rolling. Then Jaden Hicks, when I go into him, uh, same thing. He will be a starter anywhere else if you didn't have, you know, the Justin Reed, uh, uh, the Connor, we have the Cook, uh, those guys. But he's going to be in a room that he's going to learn from very talented guys. OK. Uh, and so, of course, this is something uh, a piece for future terms as far as with the Chiefs. If they decide to move on because maybe somebody's making too much money, which always is the case. Right. It, that's because NFL is a business. OK. So you become expendable when you make a whole lot of change, right? That's what happens. You get a whole lot of dollars, people don't like paying that. So he's a guy who's very young. He's going to be able to learn a whole lot, uh, and he knows exactly what he needs to know. So uh, Xavier Worthy and Jaden Hicks, man, are my two favorite guys that I loved in this draft. And we fit the need what we needed. And also to add to that, I just love the fact that we finally got a guy. So you know, in years past, we were really interested in Hollywood Brown. We were really interested in Jameson Williams. Even mm -hmm. for a moment there, I think we were, we were really interested in Ruggs that draft, but I just knew, we knew we couldn't get up there to get that. But we had a lot of interest in those fast, kind of fast switchy guys, that, that guy of every draft. Right. And the fact that we traded up to get him, I mean, there were some people out there who had Xavier Worthy going on the top 15 of this draft. Yeah. The fact that we were able to get him as late as we were, and it was our guy, obviously, that we were able to trade up to get him. I love that, and I just love his total fit in our offense. And we finally, and then, yeah. Big top offense there, Devil Spades is a big top offense. Yeah, we're gonna have that over the top uh, offense again, man. I I can't wait. It's gonna be um, yeah, it's gonna make a four by one every every game. So. Olympic man, track meet. I'm telling you right now, yeah. this is the track meet uh, before the Olympics, where we're gonna be able to see. So it's gonna yeah. be a good show. We tried trading up last year. Remember, no one would trade up for uh, with with us. Yeah, we tried trading up for a receiver because I think two, I think all three of those top receivers went like. Late teams. it was it was ta it was tackle and receivers who apparently we were trading up for. I think, yeah, we, wanted Anton, so. I think we wanted Anton Harrison, right? If I remember correctly, one of the yeah, maybe well, yeah. Uh, the, but on on the Hicks thing, I know we, we talked a lot about um uh, on, on the Hicks thing, but we, we said uh, uh Antonio West could the Hicks pick be a sign of Shamari Connor playing corner more uh, this coming season? What do you think about that? Uh, they might try him out, but I, I think he's he's good in the box. I think he's good at slot. Uh, his his forte is in the middle of the field. More so, anything else, uh, and and that is because we have some very talented guys on the outside who are more uh, adept to play that position, right? We got a Pro Bowl <laughs> corner, and then ties out there also too, man, to do a great job. Uh, can he can he take some snaps out there? Sure, but why why do it? Why do it? Especially you got guys out there who are who are great at what they do. So uh, I don't I don't think so. No. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Were you gonna say that? I was gonna say like um the PFF guys talked about that exact thing. They said how their their skill sets are so uh, alike between Connor and uh, Hicks, yet they're not redundant. Um, uh, the, the my favorite line uh, was uh, "Don't uh, notice to the league, do not throw screen passes against Kansas City." I just love that because um, they were gonna bull between Connor and Hicks. They're just gonna blow you up. Those two guys seek those out so easy they play the curls they play the flat so well um i don't think it means we'll play corner more i just think they're gonna 
um, bring they can they can afford to bring Hicks along slowly, um, keep them both fresh, and just at all times have a guy who can guard the flats, curls, and screens, and 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 just keep replacing one with the other over and over. Our DB pipeline is so sick. Um, we have cornerbacks for years. We have we have DBs for years. Even if Reed goes, I would at this point between between Connor Cook and um, and Hicks. I would not even be like I you know I, I love Reed Reed's great but if there's a contract dispute if he wants like more money than we're willing to give and we're putting our hard line like we did with Jones he's a guy I'm not saying get it done Beach like no I, if if there's a there's a money problem you can now afford this is a problem this is a problem you had a DT that you don't have a DB um, that we we don't have to take a hard line on so we or we do we can't take a hard line on and be like. We love you, Reed, but like maybe you know it's time to just move on. We have the guys that can just replace you now. Um, I, I love that. I love the Hicks pick. Um, I love the I love the Worthy pick. I, I, someone said earlier it should be an A all the way around. Worthy himself is an A. I don't like the trading up for him when apparently we didn't need to. Um, so that's my only downgrade. So it's not a downgrade of the pick, it, of the selection. It's a downgrade of what we did to get him. So that that's my my only meaning with that. I don't. I don't I'm not. I love Worthy. Because Worthy is so much more than a deep threat, and that's what made him be. Like you said, Marcus, top 15. Schrager had him 17 in his last mock. And he's very in touch with a lot of the GMs and scouts out there. Mm-hmm. It's not just some schmuck out there putting out mocks for fun. He, he's he got a you know his finger on the pulse, right? Um, and he talked to a lot of guys that had him in their top 12. Um, so it's like it's it's that – at even maybe that's why we were like, screw, we're not chancing this. Let's trade up a couple of picks. This isn't that bad. We're just giving up a third for a fourth. Whatever. Let's do it. Um, so my my favorite – I'm going to go a little different because, you know, I do love those. I'm going to you know, just try to have some variability here. Um, I'm going to go – I'm going to go Wiley and Norzad. Um, I love those two. The Wiley one, um, I didn't do a lot of uh, tight end research before the draft. I just looked at a couple guys that I kept seeing um, prominent mockers taking and then looked them up. Uh, the more I've looked up Wiley, the more I just I, I love and see why they did it. Um, he's something we don't have necessarily at the tight end position. Um, size and speed. Uh, Kelsey is not at the time point anymore where he's just running verticals from the seam. He can. But that's it's a waste if I think of his the beauty of his skill set, which is that wiggle and get open, right? Um, I feel like at this point in his career, Wiley doesn't have that aspect, but has the, just a straight line seam aspect. And some of the highlights I've seen are just like, man, like I, I can see why Rhee was like, yeah, I can draw a place for this guy. Um, their uh, their athletic scores coming out of out of school. We're, we're just so close. I mean, uh, Kelsey 6'6", 240, or, I'm sorry, Wiley 6'6", 249. Kelsey 6'5", 255. 40-yard, 4'6", 40-yard, 4'6", 2. 20-yard, 265. 20-yard, 272. 10-yard, 161. 10-yard, 16. Uh, shuttle, 452. Shuttle, 442. Um, Three-cone, 709. Three-cone, 719. So they're like... I know you say these numbers, man, I, I'm, and, and I know these numbers, but what does that put in percentile wise? You know what I mean? Like uh, their overall, overall great athletic scores for everything compiling from anything from three cone, their bench press, their height, their weight. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I know the numbers. I, I explain to everybody else out here as far as like his percentile with those numbers. Where does he land at that? I mean, is it 90 percentile, 80 percentile, 70? Do you have those up there? As far they as don't, like, they don't. So th- this one just takes an overall score and gives you a color grade. He grades okay. green. Him and yes. Kelsey both graded very, very green mm-hmm. um, overall. Kelsey's overall uh, relative athletic score was 9.29. Wiley's is 9.30. So, like, when I say they're, they're neck and neck, they're like identical. The one uh, negative, the only red that Wiley has on his entire chart, two net reds, his shuttle. Um, was just okay, yeah. and his his weight for his height is okay. Mm-hmm. Um, two forty nine for you know a uh, six six, whereas like Kelsey was six five and two fifty five. It's it shows you Kelsey was carrying more weight and still running those same numbers along with Wiley. So for Wiley to have to reach Kelsey, he's got to be a little lighter there, right? And but he'll get in the weight program of the NFL. Um, 
But you can tell, right, his shuttle is not what Kelsey's is, and that is part of his – well, you know, Wiley's not a perfect prospect. If he could do that perfect, he would have been a top 30 pick probably in this draft. But he doesn't have a sharp route running. He doesn't have um, – um, he rounds his routes a little more, doesn't take hard cuts. Um, but – I don't think we're going to just use him like that. We're going to, I think, use him as a specialized, like put him in the team, get him a nice mismatch, and then have him go deep. I think that's what we're going to try to, you know, manipulate and and, and take advantage of smaller matchups with him. Um, but I think he's someone that goes along, I think, with the mantra this draft was, Trafford today and tomorrow. Guys that can fill in and do things nicely for us from time to time, but then also tomorrow possibly a much larger role. I think Noah Gray... Uh, I think this is his last year. Uh, Irv Smith is a one-year deal. So, you know, and Kelsey's the age that we know, although I hope he plays for three to five more years. He might not. We don't know, right? So um, I feel like you got the upside of one of the top tight ends of a draft without having to invest what you have to invest to get a top tight end in the draft. Because obviously Bowers is better than this guy, but you'd have to trade up and give your whole draft away to get Bowers. So we got a guy with – similar upside with obviously a lot more problems right today, but we're not using him today, right? We're going to use him in sparingly uh, uh, in games uh, for like one or two draw play draw ups. Um, that's why I like Wiley a lot. Uh, led the league, by the way, in college football for tight ends at eight, um, 2% drop rate. So he's got good hands. So um, he was a lot of people's top 100 prospects. Led the league at eight t- touchdowns, right? For tight ends. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Touchdowns for tight ends. Um, uh, top 100 prospect. For a lot of people's boards, uh, Pro Football Network had him as their top three tight end on their board. So uh, a lot of people did like him in the industry. Um, and then Norzad, again, it falls with the mantra of today and tomorrow. I think Norzad gets more – probably gets the, the higher bump for me because injuries for interior linemen can happen. We didn't have one of ours for the Super Bowl and down the stretch of the, the playoffs. Um our six man last year, uh, Allegretti played the entire game in the Super Bowl, was huge for us. Um, pretty much instrumental for the past three years and filling for three spots. Um, I think Norzad gets thrusted right into that role. Um, I think uh, he's got issues. Otherwise, he'd be you know one of the top t- um, guards taken. But uh, top 100 PFN grade, PFN grade, a mid late two projection. So the value in itself is great. What I think he brings to us is insurance for this season. And if we don't go the route of re-signing Creed or Trey Smith or both, who knows, hopefully we get at least one of those guys back. Um, he can fill in and, and be one of those starters going forward for three cheap years. Um, so I love that he's a plug and play. A lot of people said he's ready to start today. And um, I love that uh, he's our insurance and then, you know, for the future. Yeah, I mean, it's all a draft, man, but both all four guys you guys selected right there were, were, were great. Um, and uh, we got Benny underscore boy five. Want to shout out, Benny. Uh, appreciate you commenting and engaging with us. And we appreciate everybody engaging with us. You got the Devil Spade. Um, and then uh, Eggs and Toast. Wiley, better than Gray. Bell, tight end two is back. JD, because uh, we're t- a lot of people are comparing him to Kelsey. As far as a – based on what you're seeing – Right, and obviously we've seen Gray play in the games and stuff, and I, I think Gray is very underrated. I don't think he gets a credit and enough that that, that he right. does deserve. I agree. To be honest with you, but w- where do you see him as far as where this prospect is when we talk about Noah Gray, when we talk about Irv Smith Jr.? So I'm, I'm gonna put it in perspective uh, from a tight end standpoint because I, I watched this as opposed to everybody else, the other tight ends coming out. Uh, he was actually ranked ninth tight end wise as far as the score athleticism uh, combined total score was seventh. Uh, which are where I had him. That's why I had him pretty much rated was like fifth, sixth tight, best tight end out there. Uh, if you're expecting Travis Kelsey, he's he's not him at all. He, he's he's not. Uh, and I, I think sometimes we look at athleticism. There's things that Travis Kelsey does a lot of tight ends just can't do. And that's his start and stop, his creativity, getting open in seams. Uh, and Jared Wiley was more, when, when you look at his, the selection of what they were throwing, they were throwing a lot of flat routes to him kind of hiding him to get him open. Uh, so they would kind of almost throw him open. They would almost scheme to get him open on some of the things. Uh, that's going to be some of the question. The question is, when you get into the NFL and you're not playing against a guy who is, is taking uh, uh, business management, you know, at linebacker safety, what are you going to do, right? I mean, seriously, that's, you, you know, you're talking about linebackers who run four or five, four fours. And sure. So 
when you're talking about threatening the scene, we don't really do a whole lot of that with Kelsey now. You know, what we do is we have Kelsey find the window, find the hole, get open, right? Yeah. Uh, and that's that's his, because of his production, his, his slippage, you know what I'm saying, his craftiness to do these things. Uh, Noah is more kind of like like Travis. Uh, hopefully, Wilder gets to that place. Um, I don't know if he will or not. I mean, he's 6'6", six, six, which kind of deters a little bit of some of the things that he might be able to do. Um, but I want him to get a little bit more physical. He's, you know, that, that was another thing as far as uh, his inline blocking uh, is not as desirable as, as people. Uh, but I do like the pick. I think he's more kind of uh, your primary tight end, you, you know, your base tight end, which you usually deal with, right, in the league. So when you see these other tight ends out here, how they're so different from Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey is a different – animal altogether, right? You're not seeing tight ends getting 100 balls a, a year, 1,000 yards and stuff like that. It's just it's, you're not really seeing that. Um, yep. And so uh, there's some elite guys in tight ends at their rank. I think uh, uh, Jared Wiley could probably be somewhere in like maybe the second tier of things if you're getting better. Uh, so uh, is he, he Kelsey's heir apparent? I mean, I, I don't believe so, not at all. Uh, but he's going to he's he's a very capable tight end. I think, he, like you said, we will put him down in the red zone where he did a lot of damage because he's a big body. He's six, six. Right. And so you throw a ball up like that when you post up like, in foot, you know, in basketball uh, to get a guy open. Uh, he did a good job as far as like uh, they were running a lot of uh, kind of uh, what we like looky passes or. um you know, like the the, the fake out running where you act like you're going to block, then go and catch it. So that was kind of uh, uh, we do a lot of the uh, the RPOs. So that's another thing that you have uh, with that. Uh, so that's uh, that's at least from my perspective as a tight end. I'm knowing and, and this is other tight ends talking. Right. I, I mean, I know guys write beautiful articles and whatnot. Like the guy was talking. Why don't they write beautiful? Articles? Well, you got a, a 12 year tight end here that, that coach tight ends and knows as a coach you see this this is official right here okay and so i mean some of these when i when i look at some of the fluff that these guys write up and when my eyes see from from playing uh i know he he's going to be a good tight end he's not travis kelsey's there apparent at all uh but we will try to stretch the defense i want to see that i you know when i go to camp and many camp and see these guys i want to see some balls thrown to him in the seam i want him to get up the seam catch some real tough balls from the backside. He has butter hands, baby. And I'm talking about soft hands. He has great hands. That's one thing he's got about him now. They're pillows. So he's got these big hands, these big mitts. When you throw the ball up to him, I mean, it, it, he plucks it beautifully. So if anything, you, you don't have to worry about throwing the ball up to him because he'll catch it. No doubt about it. And that's what I love about a, a big body guy like that. Okay. Uh, so they say four, six, two speed, you know, so when we when we talk from four six two speed, that's straight line. So Kelsey is more yeah. crafty. It is getting out of breaks. Yeah. He's got to work getting in and out of breaks. And so Patrick Mahomes is worried about the anticipation. We're talking about coming back to the football. That's another thing that Kelsey does. I mean, he's yes. around. He puts people like he. We watched Kelsey put safeties, linebackers, corners in a in a in a spin. Right. Yes. Yeah. So he he's the hey, a. He's going to learn a lot of that craftiness from him. Yes, uh, he's going to learn a lot from it from Noah Gray and also Herb Smith too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in, he's in the best room he could possibly be in for tight ends in the NFL. What so, I think he's lacking, I think, is what Kelsey can show, which is awesome. Um, yeah. The things he doesn't do well is what Kelsey's bread and butter is on um, um, the sharp route running, coming back for a ball. They say Wiley kind of sits on it and wants to box out because he's enormous, like a power forward down there. So. He likes to just box down or relying on his size. Sometimes you got to come up for it. You got to come back to it. You got to be quarterback friendly. So he yeah. can learn from Kelsey, right? Well, well, he'll learn. But see, sometimes guys just don't have that to their game, right? Like a guy learned, a, learn, a, a receiver can learn from Tyreek Hill. They just don't have Tyreek Hill's ability. You know what? That's what I'm saying. So where Travis has that ability to come, put his foot in the ground, come out and do all those things. Sure. Uh, he was still probably lacking that just because he is 6'6". You know, as a tall man, I'll tell you myself how hard it is to stop and, you know, start and get out of your brakes. Uh, you, you know, bending your knees, man. We don't like doing it at 6'6". We don't like doing that. <laughs> so, but he's, he's yeah. going 
he's he's going to be a good tight end, man. I think he works up, like you said, in 13 personnel, 12 personnel. Uh, shoot, dare I say 14? Can that happen? I would love to see something like that. That's fun. Uh, That's another thing, too. They moved him around a lot. He played in the slot, played split yeah. out wide. That's another thing they kind of reminded him of Kelsey, that they kind of they moved him around for matchups. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think what says a lot about our um, how teams draft, I think it's really hard just to give each team a grade like that. I think, and Riddick touched upon this uh, the other day. They were talking. They were talking about Brady, and you know his career and being where he drafted and an amazing with the steal, best steal ever. And he talked a lot about you know situation is so important for these guys. Yes. Going to the right team, going to the right coaching staff, um, and I think he's going to a perfect place. A team that's just not going to throw him out there and be like, "You look like Travis Kelsey now, play like him." It's not that simple, like that, and that's what you're saying. It's not it's, that's it's stupid. I don't care if it's RAS is nearly identical and he's big and strong and fast and he caught a million balls and led the league in college football on tight ends. Like putting guys out there at the right situation. We have what people are calling the best quarterback of all time. Dude hardly played his first year. So, yeah. like, to show you, it's like when you're coming to the Chiefs, you're like, you might be the best eventually of all time. That yeah. guy is looking like the best of all time. He didn't even play. So sit down, shut up, learn, know your uh, know your deficiencies, and work on getting better at them. While we use your strong suits in a game situation, you we know you're good at this, so we're gonna have you do this. But you need to be working on those things all the time if you want to maybe take over that guy's position eventually. Yeah, and so like Al Saunders when he came on the show, he said exactly. I'm not gonna ask guys to do something that they just can't do. As, as much as you work on it, you just might not have an ability to just to do it. So, you know, it, me and Gonzalez, don't ask JD to go do, you know, a spin route or something like that when we have Gonzalez to do those things, right? And so I can learn or, or the same thing, but I'm blocking the nine technique. Don't put Gonzalez in the duet. Put JD to do it, right? Yeah. His joke is 275 and will fold your neck up. That's the guy you want to put in for that guy, <laughs> right? So – uh, well, that's why I said they're not going to have. Why, not, why would you have Kelsey running seam verticals? Like that's a waste of his energy. Yeah, that's that, that, that's three to four. You know, a uh, 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 short routes he could be getting first downs on if he runs. You know, a bunch of verticals out there. Like don't don't have him do that. Why no, would yeah. you? Right. So yeah, that, this would be good. Like I said, in the in the red zone, you definitely put a big body in. I think that oh, it works yeah. for. It. But we've been waiting for a big body receiver, even when we had uh, uh, my man that uh, uh, got hurt. Hate the uh, tight end, Jody Fortson. Jody, why well, I forget Jody's name? Jody in there, put him on the outside. We didn't really throw a whole lot of seam routes to him either, as much as we should have. But Rasheed Rice, we did throw some seams. We, we threw some things with him, right? But it's a different kind of athleticism. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. I, look, I, I I like him. I do like him. Uh, I think he'll get stronger. Uh, no doubt about it. Everybody talking still like this worthy and worthy than those guys, those fast guys are going to help out with those things as well, right? We, yeah, we know yeah. that. Um, so it's another toy, as they say, for Andy to play with. Yeah, right? no doubt. Andy right now is just like a, a toy, like yeah, a, a he, really he, nice, he, like he, he, he went to an auction, he got this fun little, like, like a, a, a ATV that whenever he does go to the sand dunes, he's going to pull out that little buggy and have some fun for a day and then put it back in his garage and then go out there every couple months. That's yeah. where the Wiley is today. Today on that depth chart, he's just a fun toy for him to play with every every once in a while. Oh, yeah, I will say too, yeah. I did hear complaints about his blocking from a few different publications, but I also read that he was rated the best block, best pass blocking tight end, only allowing one pressure last year. So there probably is a, line. That's why, huh? Probably wasn't staying home to block much. He's probably running routes. That <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, he might have. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah I, I, I'm sure they take that consideration, but it didn't look like he was bad at it because I mean, for the ten. JD? He, for the ten, he may have done it. I well, mean, what did, what did you what, what did you see from his blocking? I mean, you're you're the blocking uh, expert, so yeah, I've I, I seen very little of it. And what I did see, I, I think he did a decent job. Uh, and it's the same thing when I look at his his stance. You know, because he is tall, he gets sets his butt down a little bit lower, so he's not able to push out, especially inline blocking uh, as much. But he he's he's going to be an athletic guy if you need for him to do that. Uh, he will. I tell you, who does it better than anybody else, man. And he, he, he is Noah Gray, 
right? He's another guy. No Gray is a guy, Irv Smith, that you have in the backfield, more of an H-back type of deal that you probably want to have to use him like that as well, right? <laughs> Only is what you just needed. So what they did with him, moved him a lot. If you move him in motion to come a block, a defensive end or outside linebacker, sure. I think I think you do a pretty good job because he's you know he's athletic enough to move his feet to get that done. Um, so I, I yeah, I, I don't have any problems as far as doing that. But I, as far as like when they say best, you know, pass blocking, I didn't really see a whole lot of it. I, yeah. I just didn't. So is that he had, only did ten of them? Didn't give nothing up, but. Yeah, you know, you know, you know, on that thread where they posted that on Twitter, it, it gave the uh, it was uh, it was PFF Kansas City Chiefs on mm-hmm. that thread where they said that about eight comments down is Jason Dunn 2.0 question mark. I heard that. I did, and I was just like, oh, don't do that. Don't do. <laughs> talk about, talk about expectations right there. That's, that's, why, that's, that's why you're being hard on the guy. You saw it. He was like, oh hell no. Oh, no <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Hey, look. Hey, listen. All right, I'm a different animal totally. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, look, I block Hall of Famers. Those jokes you see. That's you why see. you're being a little getting a little extra grunt on them, huh? No, no, not at all. I no, mean, I'm, I'm going to give what guys do. You know, I, the thing is, look, I'm, I'm going to be fair and I'm going to be truthful. You know what I mean? I'm not going to fluff nothing up if, if the guy don't have. Uh, but, you know, if I'm sitting over, I'm blocking Reggie White and and, and, and all those guys, then, too. That's a different, different thing altogether. I hope he gets there. Matter of fact, let me get a hold of him. I'll have him be a Jason Dump 2.0. Mm-hmm. Put it that way, all right? Yeah, I'll get that get that joke of me. So they got they got uh uh Tombo working with these guys. Let me fly on Kansas City work with some of these tight ends and some of their blocking, yeah. man. Because it needs to be desired. And some of these jokers out here is atrocious on these teams, tight ends blocking. So hey, yeah. tight end you tight end you, you, tight end you at the end of summer. Yeah. So <laughs> Uh, I do. Before we go to our, our um, the last seg- segment here of our least favorite pick, I have a question here from Gabriel Goodwin, who's been trying to get this question. And do you guys, the panel, think Worthy will eventually be as good as Tyreek? See, that's another like man. It's a different animal. That's yeah, different animal. we're talking about Tyreek, who right now has already propelled himself as being like one of the greatest ever through his athleticism in a league. Ever. Right. Uh, so I don't want to do it to the guy worthy. I don't want to do it to him. OK, that's the worst thing we possibly do is go in and put names and down them with these coats that they haven't earned. Him. Guy ain't caught one ball yet in the NFL. And we always say it's going to be as good as Tyree. If he give us 75, 80 balls. Beautiful. That's an A plus for me. That's all I want to see. And so uh, he's going he's gonna to get he's going to get a lot of yak yards for what we do. Uh, he's going to be a great receiver. Uh, so I'm not going to be, I'm, I ain't going to give him Tyreek. Tyreek is a whole different skill set altogether. Tyreek makes the whole secondary look funny. I, I laugh when I watch Tyreek out there. I laugh. Even when we play him, the things he does, I laugh because he just, he's making people look silly. He is. That's how Dante used to make the guys look. When I watched Dante, and Dante used to make, you know, star stop and make guys, I was like, dude, he's playing games with these guys out here right now. I love to see Worthy do some things like that. So we'll, it's, we'll wait and see. But he does have an ability to make guys miss. Yeah, so. that's uh, wanting Tyreek Hill. There is, is just greedy at this point. Um, taking <laughs> t- t- taking a, an average of his comps, and I see uh, Gabriel Goodwin's also asking that uh, too. Um, a lot of his comps were uh, Devonta Smith, uh, Deshaun Jackson, uh, Ted Ginn Jr., Tank go. Dell, Mike Wallace. You take a you take an average of those guys. We're fine. <laughs> we are. We are. Take all those guys, put them in a blender, and just pour it into your cup. We're good at that point. Like I mean, Tyreek Hill is at this point for us is like a luxury. What we're yeah. missing, what we've been missing, is the Tyreek Hill skill set and a guy who can adequately do that. I think. Um. So it's not necessarily we, we haven't had that. It's not that when people say, "Oh, you, they're they're missing Tyreek Hill." Well, everyone's missing a Tyreek Hill. He's the best, one of the best receivers in the league, right? I think we're just missing a guy who can provide that fear. That, yeah. that Tyreek puts in the defenses. You don't you don't need to be Tyree Kill to give defenses fear. Mm-hmm. Um, like we said many times last year, we didn't have enough guys who defenses gave a shit about. Like they would be like, all right, Kelsey's there, Rice is there. All right, let's go. Everyone, you get him. Everyone else, eyes on Mahomes and track where he is. You can't do that anymore. Yeah. You just can't do that. We have way too many guys in the field that you have to account for and be worried about now. Um, right. and and I think that just that's giving us what we've been needing and missing, not necessarily number 10 out there 
you know, with 1,500 yards and, and 10 touchdowns. We don't necessarily need that. It's amazing to have that. I just We need someone to give someone that fear again. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, Stone Cold Jones make a, uh, makes a good point. I, I do believe this is the reason we did move up. He says 49ers were easily taken worthy with their Pearsall pick. I, I agree. I do believe that. And San Fran was right yeah. there. So I think that's why the Chiefs moved up. They probably heard that. Um, and, you know, they're not going to give their hand up all the way. But I know they had their eye on, on, on Worthy probably the, the entire time. And so San Fran, you know, you're dealing with Ayuk out there. You're talking about getting another speedster. Yep. You know, uh, and, and shoot, yeah. they. I will they, say Pearsall they, looks like a uh, Ayuk um, insurance, though, doesn't he? Man, he does. I, I like Pearsall. I, I, Pearsall was one of my favorites, too, as a wide receiver, man. I, I, I loved his route running. He's very tough. And he tested out the water. So those things, and when I see like the numbers, uh, is indicative of explosion and speed. That's what I look at. And so he had like a 41 inch vertical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was free. Something crazy. Yeah, mm-hmm. ran like a four, I think, yeah. four, four or something. So yeah, Brian Jump was, was crazy. Uh, but yeah, I think I think Shanahan was definitely looking at worthy, right? Shoot. Now you got another guy to get the head on the goalpost like a Christian McCaffrey, right? And so on the outside. Uh, yeah, it was definitely on the table for sure. No um, doubt. Um, right. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Marcus. Yeah, no, I just had to go to our final topic here. Uh, least favorite pick of the draft. Now, this is not saying you hate this pick. This is just your least favorite of the draft. Like, And, I, and obviously, J.D. and I, at, at certain points in the draft, like, oh, man, defense tackle would be great right here. But instead, we go another DB uh, for the millionth time. Um, but, uh, yeah, so uh, what was your least favorite pick, least sexiest pick for you? Uh, least sexiest pick probably was mm, – I'm gonna give you two, okay? Same thing, and it was probably our, our, our last two it was Kamal Hayden and C.J. Hansen, okay? Uh, I think those because it was kind of redundant. Uh, I think we got a guy in Norzad uh, that was able to fit what we needed to fit. I know C.J. Hansen is one of those depth pieces. Obviously, we don't know what's going to happen after the season, what it's going to look like. Um, and that, that's, on, that's the only thing for me because I thought we were pretty good. I was like, okay, we got Norzad. That's true. That's perfect. But we got – so we got another guy on the inside I thought was redundant. Hayden, uh, we, we got DBs. We, we got a lot of guys uh, that, that do things really well. Uh, but this is somebody – because we have uh, 20 DBs on our, our staff right <laughs> on the field right now, okay, uh, I, was, I was like, do we need another DB? Do we really need one? I, safety makes sense for me. Safety absolutely makes sense. Uh, but yeah, maybe they like they love his his measurables, right? Kind of sneeze body type kind of guy. So I get it. I do get it. Uh, but I like the two guys. I'm not, I'm just saying to me these were kind of redundant picks for me, and that's the only reason I was like, ah, okay, well we didn't get defensive line, you know, defensive tackle. So. Or get or got our guy uh, Brandon Rice who was there was hanging around there in that seventh <laughs> round for. Tell seven round that crazy to me. Yeah. Tell you who is your uh, your least favorite pick as we uh, um. I hate to go exactly what uh, JD did, but I'm going I'm going Hayden as well, and because I already talked talked about it earlier, I'm going to touch more about it. It's it's because CJ made a little more sense to me. I think CJ shows us that Trey Smith or Creed or definitely one of those guys is gone. And I think they're going to want Norzad to fill in for whoever's gone. And they want CJ to possibly be what Norzad's going to be this season, which is the utility inside man <laughs> backup. So I think they were kind of planning a, a way a year ahead and having both locked up in a best case scenario. Obviously, you're not like counting on your seventh round pick to be your sixth man a year away. But they're hoping with coaching that he can eventually become what Norzad is this year. Um, Hayden... The only reason why, and I'm getting greedy because, what, he was a six-round pick. You can't expect him to be a top prospect. Some of his negatives do scare me a little bit in that um, he did grade really high this year, um, but it was like his only considered good year. Uh, he moved around three different schools. Um, he battled a lot of injuries. Um, and the grade that the PFF guys were talking about, he only had six games of healthy. So, um, uh so, yeah, um, it does scare me a little bit that injury is something you can't control. 
Um, but uh, that's probably why. Just that injury, I'm going to temper my expectations about it because we are – you're hoping a guy can stay healthy on top of everything else. But we are a DB factory, so, uh, you know, I, who right. knows? Mm-hmm. Yeah. DBU. DBU, baby. Yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> each man knows how, he knows how to do it. Yeah. Agreed. All right, guys. I can't, I guess that does it. That that is it for our draft coverage of 2024. It's been an amazing. Yeah, the, about the time. It's been an amazing uh, five days. We've been doing this. Well, we've been doing draft coverage for the last few months, but you know, this whole weekend of uh, you know Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then uh, finishing up here on Sunday. It's been great hanging out with you guys on Bleach Report, hanging out with our people on YouTube. You guys have been amazing, staying in the after hours with us at midnight, uh, one o'clock a.m. shows, uh, and then two in the afternoon uh, on the East Coast on. Uh, on uh on sundays so uh that does it so we'll see you guys uh and we we have a few shows coming up in may in uh in um on bleacher report we'll also have shows of course on our youtube channel uh you guys can get that anywhere you get your podcasts and uh yeah hopefully looking forward for some of the, the new visitors on uh, bleacher report to head on over to youtube for uh, more content but uh sure. that does it for us guys all right appreciate everybody showing up coming out seeing us giving all your your, your engagement your thoughts, your concerns about everything. This was a great job. I love doing it uh, with these two guys right here. Uh, special dudes right here, man. Love these brothers. These are yeah, the dad's brothers. Dad's brothers. So, uh, but yeah, man, we, we're going to keep bringing it to you. We're going to keep giving you some good stuff. Uh, but this thing right here that we got with Chief Concerns, man, is just going to grow and get better. So, and it, I got, sorry, JJ, I don't want to interrupt you. No, no, go ahead, brother. Go I was going to go back to the original comment of uh, the written article, um, the interaction we had and answering questions from people um, in the back and forth, that's what you don't get in a written article. You write your article and you put it out there and you let people react on social media and go nuts over it. Um, This, uh, I was able to give my opinion. JD took it, bounced off his thought. Marcus took it, bounced off his thought, gave a follow-up question. I answered a follow-up question. JD reacted off my follow-up question. Um, those are like just 30 things you have when you don't, when you don't do a written article on top of the fact that we were able to give more information based on follow-ups live in the chat. So there there's go. about 10 reasons why you do videos and not, uh, not the article. And that's the beauty of live streams. <laughs> and here we are. Yeah, I think that was a troll though. I think he was a troll coming. No, on. no, it's okay. I mean, you know, I'm just, he immediately I'm, came in and was like, Hey, what the, what, yeah. what, what are you doing here? <laughs> And then he bailed too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. Kyle, uh, Kyle Molsky here. Keep it up, you guys. You guys are killing it. So good to see the underrated Jason Dunn again. He was one of the guys I got into the Chiefs. There you go. There you go. Hey, that, 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 that is a what we call a pre Mahomes fan right there. Right there. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, guys. Well, we'll see you guys. So, JD and I will be back on. Monday night for a short, we're probably gonna do a short live stream where we're kind of live streamed out over the last four days. It's gonna be a short little Monday morning tight end live stream just to get your guys' questions and everything on the on the draft uh, and everything you guys have for us. But um, yeah, guys, that does it for us. We'll see you guys. We guys have a good rest of your weekend, and I love you, fellas, and I love everybody in our chats, yes. YouTube, everywhere. All right, we'll see you. See you guys. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out the best clips from Chief Concerns. And if you prefer to listen to the show, subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts.